Hello, Charleston. That's me. I love you more. Um, so, Joan Didion said, we tell ourselves stories in order to live. I'd counter that we tell ourselves stories to make sense of our living. When we're young, we come into the world with a pressing question that comes straight from our limbic systems. And if you don't know, your limbic system is where um, your emotions live and your fight or flight and your long-term memory lives. And the question is very simple, and it's why. And trying to answer it is my life's work. So I'm going to tell you a story. So when I was about seven, um, my mom took me clothes shopping, which at the time I absolutely hated because there was all this, you know, dressing and undressing and the turning around and the, you know, does this fit? And so I try on this pair of pants and my mom says, you know, do they fit? Are you sure? And I was, I was like, yes, they fit. I just, I wanted to get out of there. I wanted to leave. And, and she was like, I'm not, oh, I'm not sure. So I turned around again. And then she said something to me. Um, with genuine concern, and it was this, are you sure there's enough room in the crotch? <laughs> and what I wanted to do was like break the fourth wall like in TV and be like, did you hear this? <laughs> I was seven. And it was at that moment that I decided to become a writer because I was like, somebody has to write this down. This is too funny. <laughs> So when I tell you that story, I'm aware that several things are kind of happening. You might be flashing back to your own terrible story of clothes shopping with your own parents. Um, you might be thinking of one of a million one-liners your mom has, because they all have them. Or you're wondering why my mother was so concerned with my inseam at such a young age. <laughs> or you just remembered, oh my god, I need a new pair of pants. So by telling you that story, I've sparked a thought or a feeling or an action or maybe even another story in you, and that's really the job of a writer. So as a working writer, which is very different, um, every day I'm asked to put words together in this way that is both succinct and expressive, and it's in a way that compels someone to feel something or think or click or donate, or buy something right now, because there's no better time to write, buy something than right now. Writing is like crawling into someone else's skin and recording what you see. It's about stripping away the excess layers and burrowing into things most vulnerable places to answer one question, why? So I wanna use an example of one of my favorite brands to kind of show you what I'm talking about here. This is Hendrix Gin. And by the way, I'm at Ashley Hall with a bottle of gin. Sorry, Ashley Hall, I love you. Um, so I love Hendrix, clearly. Um, but I love it for a lot of reasons. And you know, there's this awesome like apothecary bottle style packaging, so you never know how much is in there. And then their branding is, um, we're different, we're peculiar, we're not for everyone, which I love as well. I love the taste, clearly. But mostly why I love Hendrix is that my friend Andrew Watkins introduced me to it. Um, I wish she was here tonight. Um, because that night was a great story, and she told me about how some people do it with cucumber and some people do it with lime. And so then I, in turn, introduced it to a bunch of my friends, and we had this amazing dinner party that lasted well into the night and well into the next morning, and it spawned like nine other stories, only two of which I can legally share with you tonight. <laughs> um, but it's funny, because I look at this bottle and I realize that the smallest part of what I do as a writer or what we as creatives do is what ends up right here. It's the investigation and digging and conversations and listening and hours spent in front of a blank piece of paper or the curse, the cursor, the cursor, or trying all these different things to create this story of why. Um, because as Simon Sinek so beautifully says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And on the days, <laughs> When you find the question, you find the answer to why, it's nothing short of bliss. And on the days when it's a struggle, you might find yourself taking a little nip a little before noon. 
Not me, but this is what I hear from people. Of course, it's always sexier and more fun to write about things like booze and iPods, um, but it's my job to tell everybody's story. Like the one of the guy who manufactures input out, output devices for computers, or the woman who sells protective covers for your recreational vehicle. It's important. I know it sounds hard to believe, but just as there is drudgery in every job, I don't care how glamorous you think it is, there is beauty inherent in everything. Every job, every person, every brand. And it's our collective job here to reveal that and to answer the question why. Um, oh, I gotta go fast. Okay, so I wanna do a quick little story um, telling on the fly so you can understand what I do. So, where's my girl? Where's my girl? Here, come on, real quick. So, um, what do you do for a living? I'm a designer at Urban Electric and we are a lighting design firm here in town. Okay, so lighting. Okay, so is the stuff that you do made by like craftspeople? Absolutely, handmade, welded, made here right in Charleston. Um, it's fabulous, beautiful, elegant stuff. Awesome. Okay, so it's handcrafted. So you're hearkening back to the days where like people did stuff with their hands and it meant something. So there's, um, there, it's it's heroic work. It is um, hands-on. It is it's it's really sort of it's American-made. It's local and it's lighting. So it's it's you're lighting up the world. You are an enlightener of the world. My God. Okay, I got I got one one I got one more. I got one more. Cheryl, are you here? I got one more, real quick. I'm sorry, I know, I know I'm out of time. It'll, it'll be real fast. Okay. Sh Cheryl, can you tell this crowd what you do for a living? Uh, I write. <laughs> You're a writer? 